this pig here. Yellow line. <laughs> yeah, so uh, tell you about some recent work I did together with uh, Barbara Soda and Achim Kemp. Um, I will uh, give you a quick overview what what to expect. So first, a very brief motivation. The first two topics will be uh, to give some motivation of uh, what, what we have done. And then uh, I will introduce a new type of uh, path integral and uh, then come to some results that are give some promising uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, perspective to this, uh, to this new path integral. Um, yeah, so just to introdu introduce the idea, um, as many quantum gravity approaches show, is that we don't really expect that a differentiable manifold is a good description of, uh, of physics at very high energies. Um, uh, but a picture of a manifold with, with some matter fields on it should emerge at, at low energies. And uh, what, would, what we did here is to in try to investigate uh, a mechanism of emergence because this is still something that yeah, could be understood much better how, this, how uh, such a scheme of emergence would look. Um, we did that from a point of view of a path integral formalism where we actually start only with a, a, a matter gravity action but not actually a, a manifold structure or a metric structure uh, from the outset. Um, so, as I said, we wanted to take a kind of non-geometric starting point where we just have a Hilbert space and some bosonic and fermionic degrees of freedom and a Laplace and a Dirac operator. Um, and this is kind of re related or in the, in the tradition of uh, uh, this famous uh, question by Mark Hans. Of, uh, can you hear the shape of a drum? It's from the field of spectral geometry and uh, uh, to formulate it differently, is can we, just from knowing the, the spectrum of a Laplacian, is it sufficient to reconstruct the manifold with, ma with its metric? And it was famously shown that the answer is no because there are some isospectral uh, uh, geometries, but recently it has been shown that when you have actually interactions as well, um, you can use the, the basis in, in which these interaction vertices are diagonal um, to, together with this expression to to get the, the metric from, the, from, a from a propagator in its, uh, in its position basis. Um, so using this as a motivation, we started working in Euclidean signature and uh, defined a, a, a path integral formalism in, in this, uh, uh, yeah, from this perspective. Um, we work in Euclidean signature because then we can use certain tools from spectral geometry, and we also uh, introduce a UV cutoff. Uh, for example, we could put it at the Planck scale, um, because then we can also use uh, a rather uh, old uh, result by uh, Gilkey and Hawking that expresses the Hilbert space dimension in terms of uh, a curvature expansion and this cutoff. And as you can maybe spot already, um, if you would just take this as a gravity action, if you have make a right choice for a coefficient in front, then we actually have the Einstein-Hilbert action, the first two terms, with higher order correction. So this is the gravity part that we take. And then the next uh, part is the, the, the matter actions. And we just, to, as a starting point, we chose uh, just to take the uh, uh, free massive um, Stein-Gordon action and the free uh, Dirac action and wrote it in a spectral first representation. Um, and in this, uh, what you see here is just in its bosonic part and, uh, and the spectrum of the Laplacian. And here, the, it's the Dirac action was decomposed in its Grassmann components um, and also with its spectrum. And what we did is these lambdas now represent the eigenvalues, not directly of the Laplacian, but of the wave operator. and the, the square root lambda is what the, 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 the are, uh, is chosen to be the eigenvalues uh, of the Dirac operator. Um, yes, that's what I said. So, combining these ingredients all together, we have uh, a gravity matter action, which is uh, yeah, fully in a spectral form. So we don't uh, need to worry about modding out the diffeomorphism group, um, and actually, its symmetry group is extended to the full unitary group. 
So as I promised you, with this we uh, constructed a path integral, which is action. And what we will do is just for the matter sector, we just use a standard uh, path integral. And for the gravitational path integral, we will uh, sum over the uh, configuration space, uh, space of the, the degrees of freedom that we chose here. So over this, uh, the Hilbert space dimensions n, and over all possible spectra of these of the uh, that are uh, present in these uh, in these actions, um, with the given uh, UV cutoff. So that would look like something like this, where we have here the path integral over the Grassmann variables, here over the bosonic variables, here over all possible spectra, and here as a sum over the uh, integer Hilbert space dimensions. Um, as I said, we started uh, ex uh, yeah, exploring this in Euclidean signature, so we have introduced a uh, inverse temperature to interpret this uh, path integral as a partition function. Um, of course, this means that the, uh, yeah, we don't really know uh, how to wick rotate this, but uh, yeah, we, we started with this uh, anyway. Um, here you can have some choices for what space of uh, spectra you want to integrate over. Um, we decided uh, to, for example, do uh, you have the choice to um, assume a zero mode or not. We did so, so that we can actually uh, investigate the spectral gap above this zero mode. And it's uh, to note here that this is, uh, this, this is just a finite uh, integral and partition function uh, and, and sum. So just now to go to some results that we found for this, uh, for this new model. Um, so for a differentiable manifold, we, can, we could extract the dimension of that manifold from Weyl's law, Weyl's Schrödinger law, here written down for the uh, density of eigenvalues. And we can, in our model, uh, obtain also a density of eigenvalues from the probability density for these specific eigenvalues. And as you see here, it, uh, it has some scaling that comes uh, uh, in terms of the number of fermionic uh, families of fermionic degrees of freedom and families of bosonic degrees of freedom. That means that if you define a uh, uh, effective dimension from such a scheme, then we actually find an effective dimension in terms of these variables, which is kind of interesting because this now says that we only have a positive um, effective dimension if there is uh, enough fermionic degrees of freedom uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, more than the bosonic degrees of freedom. Um, and what I showed you uh, until now was for uh, constant mass, but just to have a, a quick sidestep, uh, we, if we would look at uh, varying masses, we can also have a scale uh, uh, dependent effective dimension, which is so typical in many approaches to quantum gravity. Um, here we chose parameters such that we have a typical uh, dimensional reduction from a four-dimensional phase with some transitional regime to a two-dimensional uh, high-energy regime. This was just a sidestep with uh, what could be done with if you have different masses for, uh, uh, for your degrees of freedom. But I will continue now with uh, other uh, observables that we could calculate for uh, all the same masses. And that is, for example, we can calculate the expectation value uh, for the um, Hilbert space dimension. And here are uh, plots for different parameter choices. Uh, all the solid lines are for the case where there's more fermions, and the dashed lines are for the case where there's more bosons. Um, and just to give uh, a very quick summary on what our conclusion is from uh, uh, looking at this, is that whenever our fermions, uh, uh, fermions are dominant, then the Hilbert space dimension is actually bounded, and we have a uh, positive uh, integer uh, effective dimension. And when boson, uh, bosons are dominant, we don't uh, have a positive dimension, which we don't really uh, can interpret as a, as a manifold uh, um, space of our, of our model. Um, and the Hilbert space dimension is unbounded. So yes, the physical picture would here, uh, here be then that fermions span some effective manifold, but do constrain the dimension of the Hilbert space, which is uh, also uh, what you would expect maybe from fermions. Um, now to the, uh, the, the third um, observable that we could calculate is uh, an effective uh, 
uh, volume that can be uh, extracted from the from the gap because the gap in the spectrum is actually is uh, related to the diameter of a manifold if you would have a manifold. So we define an effective volume from uh, the expectation value of the gap uh, to the power of the effective dimension. And if you now compare uh, the expected Hilbert space dimension to this uh, effective volume, you actually see that uh, in this left case where, uh, for the, where the fermions are dominant, they actually match very closely and are uh, of the same order of, uh, order of magnitude. Um, and for the bosonic case, there is actually no agreement at all. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, again, if you now look at this again from this perspective of the, uh, the results that's known by uh, Hawking and Gilkey, you can see this or interpret this as that we actually found a quantum version of this in the sense that to leading order, the expected uh, Hilbert space dimension is uh, very close to the uh, effective <laughs> volume. Uh, and this, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a very nice result in the sense, um, sorry, it's a very nice result in the sense that uh, this shows us that we effectively have uh, uh, the behavior that we would expect from a manifold with madness degrees of freedom in terms of the effective density of degrees of freedom. That is actually not exactly the same, but just of the same order is also quite interesting because the, the difference could be interpreted as curvature, uh, which would be the higher order terms in this, uh, in this asymptotic expansion. So in total, this gives a remarkable consistent geometric picture whenever the fermions are dominant. Uh, we, uh, while we didn't uh, yeah, start with any in initial geometric structure and when bosons are uh, dominant, we don't have a picture like this at all. And uh, with this, I'll uh, just go now to the conclusions and uh, some outlook is we kind of investigate here a new mechanism by which we have uh, space time or geometry because it's Euclidean uh, with matter emerging from a pre-geometric pre model where we didn't have to mod, uh, deal with any uh, modding out of the diffeomorphism group. And you could see this in the perspective of that, uh, yeah, if whenever we can have a mathematical represent uh, a, a representability um, of some model in terms of abstract degrees of freedom, um, whenever we have a mathematical representability in, uh, in terms of quantum fields on a manifold with curvature, we can call that this is uh, an emergent mo model of geometry. Um, we found like uh, effective uh, dimension and uh, even uh, explored a, a setting where we have a running dimension. We could calculate an effective volume and an effective density of degrees of freedom with a special role for fermions. Um, but in the future, there's uh, still a lot of work to be done, of course. We, we would like to work, uh, do this in uh, Lorentzian signature. Um, definitely, we want to include interactions because as, as, uh, as I showed before, then we could use this um, expression where we can derive an effective metric from the propagator. Uh, we would like to vary masses. We only looked at the effective running dimension, but also the other results should be calculated for varying masses. And we can uh, explore even more possibilities, for example, decouple the eigenvalues of the different operators that we include. And uh, with this, I want to conclude. Thanks. Marcus, um, questions? Uh, yeah, I have two questions actually. Uh, first, re related to this uh, emergence, uh, um, typically when you say that uh, you have a model wi where space time emerges, uh, you, you it is assumed that you have a model in which you can uh, calculate from pr first principles that there are four dimensions. 